Hey, I'm Brittany. I am a technical trainee here at SAS. And what we're gonna talk about today is conditional logic. And yeah, I'm sure you're thinking, if something happens, then I want something to happen, right? And yeah, that is kind of the big picture, but we're gonna focus on if then statements and seeing some of those gotchas that you might not really think about when you're coding. So come on, let's take a look. So going over into Enterprise Guide, you don't have to use Enterprise Guide. It really is just what I'm using for this video. It can be for any interface, uh, the windowing environment, studio, either one. And we're gonna be using some data that's gonna be called scores. So go ahead and do a prop print step to take a look at scores. Go ahead and get that run statement in there. And let's go ahead and submit. You know what, since this might be kind of a big table, as we see a really big table, I probably wanna go back and add in an obs equals, and I'll just do something like 10. And I'll also add in a label option because there's another label on there. So let me zoom in just a bit so we can see. And with this data, we have our customers' names, where they're from, how old they are. But the main columns that we're gonna focus on are credit score and number of open credit cards, or specifically credit cards. As we already know, when it comes to conditional logic, it's this idea of if something turns out to be true, then do something. And that's gonna be the main idea that we got going on as we go through this video. For our first little scenario, we're gonna say if credit cards, and I'll just do CC, if credit cards are under eight, then risk will be low. Okay. Under eight, then risk will be low. Now, just as a disclaimer, I'm not a finance person, so don't take this as me saying, hey, if you have more than eight credit cards, you're risky. Just an example. So let me go back over to my data step. So I have our data statement to go ahead and create a new table and I'll just call it new. I know, super creative. I'll have my set statement and I'll do the scores table that I wanna read in. Then I'll add in my if then statement. So I'll have if credit cards are under eight, then let's go ahead and create a column called risk that'll be equal to low finish out the semicolon, finish out with my run statement, and let's use a proc print just so we won't have everything on there. And I'll just copy this down here. And let me use the word new. So we're actually looking at that new table that gets created. Go ahead and submit. And we got something. So we have that risk column. And then we see for my folks who have open credit cards under eight, we have the word low next to them. But what about everybody else? What are we gonna do about everyone else in my table? And you're probably wondering, why am I even saying it like that? Well, the reason that I'm saying it like that is because we're gonna use an else statement. See what I did there? So I have else risk equals high. Finish out with the semicolon. And now let's take a look. All right, so we got risk and we're missing an H. Great. This is the first gotcha. So the first gotcha is when you're going through and you're creating a new column that is a character, for example, like we have with risk, the first time that SAS sees that new character column, it's gonna create a length based on the first value that it sees. Since low only has three letters in it, and high has four, that is why the H got cut off because it was only accounting for three letters. Now, yes, you could flip those and have high first, but a better practice would be adding in something called a length statement. So I'll have length with risk, have a dollar sign, and we'll have it as four, make it a little bit bigger. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. So I'll go ahead and run data step, the proc print step. And let's zoom in a little bit. And looking pretty good. We have our high risk, we have that low risk, We're feeling pretty good, feeling successful. But if we go over to our output data, 
and I zoom in, turns out if I looked at just one more row, there's a missing value for credit cards on row 11 and some of the other ones. And it has a risk of low. And it's kind of hard to say that someone is a low risk if you don't really know anything about them. So let's go back over to our code and let's figure out what's going on. With this if then statement, we say we want low risk for anyone who has credit cards under eight. Well, missing values, missing numeric values in SAS, these are gonna be our lowest values. So when it's missing, it is considered less than eight. That's gonna be one of those gotchas. So in order to fix this, I'm gonna add in if credit cards equals missing, then risk equal to T, B, D. And let me add in that other quote, finish out the semicolon. And let's also add in that 11. Go ahead and run our data step and proc print this time. And, huh, it still says low, even though I took all of that time to type out what we needed it to say. So that was gotcha number two, but gotcha number three is actually going through and learning that with our if then statements, when they're written like this, as I walk through for that missing value for credit card row, it'll pick up that it was missing and have TBD, but then SAS will continue to check the conditions as it walks through and it'll still put risk as low. In order to fix this, we're gonna add in the word else in front of our if. So that'll tell SAS, hey, if we found out that this was missing and this made the condition true, skip the rest of those conditions and move on to the next row. Now, when I run this and I take a look, now we have that TBD for risk. And even though I just did low and high, you could add in other else if statements for medium and so on for the risk. Now, what if we want to have multiple conditions or what if we need to consider multiple things happening to our data if a condition is true? So I'm gonna copy and paste this data step and let's just pop it down here. And the first thing that I'll do is multiple conditions. So let's say that maybe having under eight credit cards is a low risk, but we also wanna consider credit scores. So maybe if they have low amount of credit cards or they have a pretty decent credit score, then they'll be low risk. So I can add in the word or, you can use or and. Here, I'm gonna use or, cause I want either one of those conditions to be true. And then I'll have credit underscore score greater than or equal to 670. And the risk will be low and then else high. Let me run this. When I look at the results, for my first person, they have over eight credit cards that are open and they have a low credit score, so they have high. However, on the second row, where a person has the 11 credit cards, they have a pretty good credit score. So that means that their risk is going to be low. Then the final piece, what about if we want to have multiple things happen? Maybe we wanna have a table that'll say high and we'll have a table that'll say low. So we'll have data, high, low to create those two tables. And in order to have multiple things happen when something turns out to be true, we're gonna use do groups. So right after the then with our credit cards over eight or under eight credit score over 670, I'll add in do and a semicolon. I'm gonna put a little room here. Output low, semicolon. And then this is another gotcha sometimes. You have to add in the end statement with that do group. That way SAS knows, okay, this is the chunk that you wanna do for this condition. 
for my else, I'll add in do. Have our risk, and we'll output pi. And then don't forget about that end. When I run my data step now, I can double click on high, and that'll be our high table with those high risk. We'll double click with low. We see our low risk table and our low risk folks, and we get our results. Just to kind of recap, yes, the idea of conditional logic is if something turns out to be true, then do something. But there are a few gotchas. Gotcha number one, dealing with character columns that you create with different lengths, working with that length statement. Gotcha number two, when you have conditions that for certain rows, both or more could be true, working with that else if. And then gotcha number three is dealing with our do groups, having our do and then our end. And actually, I lied, there's four gotchas. Don't forget about that missing value when it's numeric. That's gonna be the lowest value here. So that's why we had the issues from before with it being under eight. Well, that's it for me. Thanks everyone for listening and watching. If you had anything to say, any questions, feel free, put them in the comments below. Feel free to go ahead and like this video. And if you wanna see some more videos coming up down the line, go ahead and subscribe to this channel as well. You might even see some people that you know, but thanks everyone.